Great to be here this morning. Uh, so just a little bit, I am a CPA, right? And it's obvious the way that I'm dressed, right? This is kind of your, this is really a pocket protector. But I've been doing this for about 31 years. I've had my own practice for 26 years. And uh, one of the things is I hate you guys. Just get it through your head right now because you are going to take advantage of my client, right? So what I want to talk to you about is how did I end up loving you guys? You know, who got through to me? And uh, one of the things to note, as a CPA, we have a code, and it's the code of conduct, it's the code of ethics, it's the code of doing tax returns, and it's put out by the American Institute of CPAs. So I wrote this book a few years ago, Cracking the CPA Code, and it's literally, how do you do business with a CPA? How do you crack the code? So one of the things I want you to know is that as a CPA, when I started college, my first class, I learned a word which was called, two words, professional skepticism, which means this, I don't trust you, okay? Even if you're my brother, I don't trust you. Let me give you a real life example. My brother started a business and wanted to start doing business with my clients. I said, great, once you've been in business two years, then I'll introduce you to some of my clients. I don't care that you're my brother, but I'm not going to introduce you to some of my clients until you really make a go of your company. Uh, a good friend of mine started a payroll company. I said, great, when you've been in business three years, I will then send a client to you, okay? And the reasoning for that is that we're very protective. Why? Because we've learned professional skepticism. So the first thing that I talk about in this book is be aware of that, right? So if you already know going in to talk to a CPA, that they don't trust you, right? So they don't even know you. They probably don't like you already. And here's why they don't like you. They don't trust you, okay? So right now, who's been here at ADP four months or less? Raise your hand. And who has a grandparent uh, living here in Indiana of that group? Merrick, did I pronounce it right? Yep. Okay, come up here. So, here's the deal. Uh, I sell Depends. You know what Depends are? No, it's adult not. diapers. Okay. Okay? So, I'm selling adult diapers. And are we talking about uh, grandmother? Grandmother, yeah. And how old is your grandmother? 81. 81. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, could we call your grandmother right now and I'd like to tell her about Depends because she probably needs them. Do you know if she needs them? doesn't matter. I've got a great product. She'll never leak. She'll never be embarrassed if she's in church, if she's with friends. She's going to be able to wear these Depends and never be embarrassed. You can't see them. There's no panty lines, nothing. So do you mind if we call your grandmother? Better yet, I don't even need to know. What's her name? Um, Diana. Great. I'm just going to go look it up, and I'm going to go visit with Diana, and I'm going to say, hey, I was talking with your granddaughter. She told me that I could give you a call, and I'd like to visit with you about buying some Depends. How do you feel right now about that? Uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable. Yep. And why? Because I would want to make sure it's good before I bring my grandma in. That's right. Mm -hmm. You'd want to get to know me a little bit, right? Yeah. Because we're talking about something that's intimate. We're talking about panties, right, that help you not show leakage. That's something that would be embarrassing. Am I right? So you're feeling protective. Mm -hmm. What would it take for you to then trust me to then call your grandmother? Um, maybe kind of seeing the product, knowing more about it, knowing more about you. Okay. Building that up a little bit more time. Yeah. And how many times would I need to visit with you for you to feel comfortable enough for us to go visit with your grandmother? Maybe like five. -ish, okay. I would say. Okay. And um, would it be okay if I just showed up at her door and just let her know that her granddaughter, she doesn't have to worry your granddaughter, Merrick told me to come and see you. How would you feel about that? You would probably scare her to death. Okay. Yeah. So would it be better that we went together? Probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least the first time? Yeah. Okay. So now if your grandmother, we decided this was a good match, we went, your grandmother's so thankful to you, mm -hmm. right? Because it turns out she does have this issue and she was using an inferior product and uh, every once in a while she was embarrassed because there was leakage, right? So she is so happy. Now, let's just pretend that you have an aunt, her sister. Okay. Okay. Now, would you be comfortable with me just running over to visit with your aunt? Maybe not directly, but more comfortable than starting out with yeah. your grandma. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So, thank you for participating. I'm giving you a JJ the CPA 
uh, t-shirt. I uh, helped a small business in California, uh, Coach's Pit Barbecue, and we were selling those, so I'm giving one of those to you. Thank so thank you. you. A round of applause for Merrick. So who here knows somebody in the mafia? Anybody? I knew it. I could just tell. You're probably in the mafia, right? You're the Don, right? Okay. So you actually all know somebody in the mafia if you're trying to do business with a CPA. Because right now, I have the ring to my clients. And you better kiss it every single time. And I'm not kidding if you even want to talk to my clients. Does anybody just happen to see the movie Godfather? Right? Came out in 1974. Right? Seen it? Anybody seen any other mafia movie? Any? Right? No? Goodfellas. Yeah, Goodfellas. Anybody seen a mafia TV show? Sopranos. Sopranos. So what happens, Mason, if uh, all of a sudden I decide I don't like you and I think you've done me wrong? Not good. Yeah. Well, probably if I'm in the mafia, you're dead by the morning, right? You're swimming with the fishes. Like, seriously, we're going to have it done. We're going to put a bullet in your head, and you're done, and you're out. And guess what? Would Mason ever be able to do business again if he's dead at the bottom of the Potomac? Right? So what are you trying to do? Not get shot in the head by the CPA that you're doing business with. Because once you're dead to them, you're dead to them, which also means you made ADP dead to them. Right, which is not a good thing. And here's what I love about ADP is that, uh, I'm just going to tell you, I had a stroke a couple years ago, so when I'm talking, I shake a little bit. I'm not nervous, okay? Just telling you. And I don't have Depends on either. <laughs> but one of the things that I love about ADP is they've been around forever. So my grandfather was a certified public accountant. Omar Abbott Slater, the great late CPA. And uh, his business card said SOS Omar on it. He was quite a character, probably where Coop and I get it from, right? It's in the blood. But when I was a sophomore in college, took my first accounting class, I went right home and I said, okay, granddad, I've seen the white shoes, the Mercedes, the gold watch, the beach house, the money, Dodgers, everything that you do, everybody that knows you, I wanted that lifestyle. Right? Watch. Okay? It's a Rolex. I got four of them. Right? I'm wearing expensive shoes. Right? I do have socks on today because I was talking to y'all. But usually I'm doing a little Miami Vice look. You probably don't even know what that means. What it means is this. Right? I'm a showman. So that's not your usual CPA though, right? Right? Not at all. Your usual CPA is somebody that's going to be very conservative in nature. So how do you know what you're dealing with? What is that CPA wearing? Are they wearing this, right? Are they wearing the white shirt and the black pants with the comfortable shoes from Payless? So read your CPA to know what you're up against. Are they looking at the floor more than they're looking at you? How many times did it take for you to get in to visit with them? So keep in mind what kind of CPA you're working with. So I had a, a payroll company called Payday. Uh, I started my practice in 1997, back before the turn of the century, maybe before some of you were born, probably not. But there was a payroll company that was local called Payday. And this guy, every other Friday, would come by the office and he'd leave a Payday candy bar. I don't know if they even still make them. And he just popped by, he's super friendly. And after five years of doing that, he said, hey, I, I have a question for you. Uh, how come you, you know, how come you've never sent me any business? I said, because you never asked. You just dropped off a payday bar and headed out. So I figured you needed to go play golf. You didn't tell me anything about you. You didn't tell me anything about your company. You just brought me some gift. And you just, you did bring it every other time. And I thought about you every other time, right? About payroll and whatnot. But you didn't ask. So with this, you need to communicate with your CPA, but you've got to learn how to communicate. So how do you communicate? Well, my grandfather told me straight away, as I told you, I was a sophomore in college, took my first accounting class, said, all right, I've seen the lifestyle. Now I've taken accounting. And it's obvious, right? Everyone wants to become a CPA. I said, but I want to become a CPA. Tell me more about being a CPA. 
He said, well, if you want to do what I do, I have a small practice, solo practitioner. I recommend being small. He said, the first thing I'm going to tell you right now is focus in on tax, work with doctors and lawyers. Don't do sales tax. Don't do payroll. Don't do payroll for yourself. Don't do payroll for your clients. Don't work with clients that do payroll for themselves. You need to get connected with a company like ADP or we're not going to even say it. Beep, the other company he said, right? So here I am. So I, I graduated uh, uh, high school when I was 17. So my sophomore year, I'm like uh, maybe not even 19 yet. He's telling me ADP, right? So I'm already knowing this word ADP. One of the things that he told me about that was he said, what you want to do is focus in on working with your clients, doing tax planning, because that's what they're going to pay for. So one of the things that you could ask one of your CPAs, if you're trying to get in the door, is ask them, what can I do to change your life? First of all, if you asked me that question, I'd be like, wow, like, who is this? This is, this is kind of an intriguing question. But if you said, what could I do to change your life? And you listen. Maybe they say, I would love to go to a Pacers game and sit floor side. What could I do to make that happen, right? You could go all kinds of different directions. But you'd say, what could I do to change your life in your practice? Because here's the deal. Unlike me, many didn't have a grandfather to give them advice before they even got their CPA or set up their own practice. But the reason he told me that is he said, you want to save time for the big ticket items, right? People don't want to pay for payroll. It's a headache, all the extra deadlines. So if you're talking with a CPA that they're doing payroll for their clients, what you can tell them is, I literally can change your life. I can make your life better in every way. You say, would you want to spend more time with your family? What are they going to say? No. Uh, would you like to go and uh, if you learn that they like basketball, would you like to go to a few more games? Yes. What would you do if I could make that happen for you if you were to ask them that? Like, well, I'd probably like you. And you could start a conversation not talking about necessarily ADP, but having a conversation with them about how they could save themselves time, more time for their clients, more time for their family by allowing ADP to partner with them, allowing ADP to be a part of their process. And then you were to say, so for me to change your life, what can I do so that you will trust me? Right? Just ask them straight up. What can I do so that you can trust me? What is it that you want to know about ADP? Ask them questions. Telling is not selling. Right? Ben Affleck from Boiler Room. You seen the movie? You need to. Right? It's, it's crass, right? But you pick up some tips. Telling's not selling. Telling them about ADP, I, they probably already know about ADP, right? By the way, unfortunately, they may have already had a lot of other ADP's uh, reps knocking on their door that either decided to give up because they never got anywhere with them uh, and or uh, they've gone to a different company, right? So they're probably already familiar with ADP. They know what payroll is. Right? So what are you trying to do? You're trying to build a relationship. How can you help them? So when I talk about this book is there was a mechanic in the Navy back in the 60s. And um, I give him credit in it. But he came up with this concept called KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Right? So this guy is an engineer on Navy battleships. Right? And when you got to fix stuff and come up with processes, so with the CPA, keep it simple, stupid, right? Meaning you're stupid. I'm calling you stupid if you don't keep it simple. I don't mean to be rude. I'm just trying to drive a point home, and that's what he said. Keep it simple as this. <clears throat> they already know how payroll works. They already know that an employee needs to get paid. There's going to be taxes withheld. There's all kinds of forms that have to get filed, and they have to get filed timely. There's W-2s that have to tie to the tax return, blah, 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 blah. They already know all that. What don't they know about ADP? How do you know? Ask. What is it that I could tell you about ADP that would get you comfortable with how we go about it? Because 
we all know that the process is similar from one company to the next. So you keep it simple by saying, here's what we do at ADP. We make the CPA's life better. That's our whole goal. And the way that we keep your life better is that our aim is to keep your employees, uh, or I'm sorry, your clients' life better, which really means to what? What does ADP really do? You might do payroll for the CPA firm, right? Which would be huge. And you might do payroll for the business, but most businesses have one or two owners. Your real customer that you need to keep in mind, that the CPA is keeping in mind, your real customer is not the CPA and it's not even really the business owner because what I hear from TJ and Lori and Kelly and Eric and Haley is that one in five Americans have a paycheck somehow or not ran through the ADP system, right? So who are your real customers? 20% of America, the employee. So as a CPA, just like with our example here, you're getting ready to go talk to my grandmother. So how would you approach talking to somebody about wanting to talk to their grandmother about wearing Depends, right? Because when you're talking to my business owner, you're also talking to their client, uh, to their employees. See, I'm knowing this as a CPA. And remember I told you about a code and professional skepticism? So what I know is, and I experience all the time, but if I'm in a meeting and somebody's selling any kind of deal, right? Investment, doing a 401k, banking. I just have to sit there and I wait for the client to look at me and I do this. And then they're going to do the deal, right? And part of that is that whoever's sitting there, you know what they did? They kissed the ring. They didn't get shot in the head. They're not dead to me. And I trust them. But here's the deal. So Jason Osborne, Jason Casey, uh, Jason Claiborne, there's a lot of Jason, Tim Hefner, Lance Baker, Jerry Kiefer, all mentioned in my book at the beginning, dedicated to them, but they cracked my CPA code. And I just send business after business after business after business to these guys because I trust them. One of the ways that I got to trust them is I didn't ask uh, or I'm sorry, they didn't ask to just go see my client. They wanted to sit down with the client and me. So one of the ways that you can get a CPA to trust you is to say, do you know uh, one of your clients that's one of your worst clients? Like, do you have a client that you're like, gosh, dang it, every time I pick up the phone, it's one problem after another. Can we go visit with that client together? Can we go visit with that client together? Now you might actually add to that, you know, do you have a client that they're always in a mess with payroll? They're always getting an IRS letter. You say, could we go visit with that client together? You know what they might say? You know what? I'm going to let you go visit with them all by yourself. Now I want you to think of this. You have an opportunity with somebody that's a disaster to see if you could make it not a disaster for that CPA. So you're putting yourself in action, right? By proving yourself. Just the same as if I said, Mason, I've got a job for you. So someone's going to meet you tonight about 2 a.m. Um, when you go into the club that we're going to be at, he's going to point out who it is. And in the bathroom, underneath the toilet, there's going to be a gun. And you know what you need to do. Right? So if Mason doesn't do that and we're in the mafia, what do you think happens to Mason? Right? Well, first of all, he's not a made man, right? You're not a made man. How, what's a made man? Someone gets their head blown off by a gun that you pulled the trigger on, right? Pretty dramatic, right? I'm being really dramatic here, but that's how CPA see this. So if a CPA gives you a challenge like that, it better now be number one priority. Not tomorrow, not next week, now. When that says, yeah, I got a client, it's like, can we call him right now? Not if we call him together? Right? Action right in front of them. Could you imagine if the first meeting you had with the CPA, no matter how they're dressed, you said to them, how can I make your life better? And they go, um, I don't know. 
well, let's try this. Who's your worst client? Can I try and work with them with you? Who's the client that you almost would be ready to fire? They're probably going to be laughing, you know? And what can I do to make that situation better? Try and problem solve with them. And give you kind of an example. So the most valuable commodity I know of, okay, for me is time. There's not enough of it, right? We can't make more of it. That's an obvious. But I make money based on my time. Now, I don't bill by the hour really anymore. But there's only so much time that I now want to work. And CPAs right now are facing a huge dilemma because there are less graduating students that even want to become CPAs, down 50%, uh, 50% less accounting graduates are taking the CPA exam just compared to 10 years ago. So CPAs are uh, definitely have less influx. The other aspect, yes. I have a stat that I got from a CPA yesterday that he goes to all of the colleges surrounding in Indiana besides Ball State, IU, IUPUI, and Purdue. So all the other colleges um, for recruiting for fresh college grads. On average, there's 300 every year. This year, there were 38 candidates. In previous years, there used to be 300. So that just proves wow. like the stats that we use all the time. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah. I was mind blown when I heard that. Yeah, that is that, yeah, that is crazy. Thank you, Maddie. Well, <laughs> in the last 10 years. 50% less uh, account, or accounting students are taking the CPA exam. We have a crisis on our hands. Now, the other thing is, is that who are you most likely talking to um, in a CPA firm? Who are you trying to actually connect with? It's probably the owner, right? One of the things that my grandfather also told me is make the bookkeeper of your client very important to you, their VIP. Make their front person very important to you. Right? These are the people who are going to talk behind your back, good or bad. Right? Now, he said, make sure the bookkeeper's high on you because you're really actually more working with them. Ask to visit with the staff of the CPA firm. Um, ask to say, hey, can we... Uh, we could either roll in a video or if you have content, uh, and I'll make it worth your while, we can provide the CPE at no cost and talk about nothing related to payroll. Right? I want you to talk about time management. I want you to talk about soft skills. This is another thing that CPAs and our staffs lack. We don't get trained on it. It's not our personality most of the time. But if you're now helping that CPA firm with efficiency. So basically what we heard yesterday at the conference was, was uh, um, Cooper and I came up with a few things and I'm an old dog, didn't think I could be taught any new tricks and I was just like, wow, I never even thought about this stuff. But it was all soft skill stuff about running my own practice. So you all have relationship uh, with ThinkWorks, you probably could get access to some of what they do. But if you can help a CPA become more efficient, right, by talking with their staff, be another thing that probably most people aren't doing. What do they do? Hey, uh, is such and such available? No? Okay. Well, will you give them this payday candy bar? Here I am two weeks later. Hey, is uh, JJ available? No. Will you give them this payday candy bar? Right? That's weak. Go home. Get out of here. Go do something else. Right? Because clearly you don't want to do anything related to what ADP does. Right? What you want to do is, man, you are looking sharp today. How are you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, good, good. How long have you been at this company? Um, about six and a half years. Nice. Okay. You, do you like it here? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys have a beautiful, beautiful building. Uh, you know, I drive by this all the time. I uh, love the trees that are out here. Um, you know, one of the things that's, that's interesting. And then just start chatting this person up. Right? Because they're there. They don't have a choice. They're going to sit there and they're going to have to talk to you. Right? Now, maybe you get to know them well enough because that person's not going to be available. Okay? But you know how you try and make that person available? You say, hey, do you think that uh, Sally, Jeffrey, whatever, 
you think they could spare one minute? And I don't mind you just taking me down the hall, and I'll just pop my head in and just give, can I get 30 seconds? And then you better just take 30 seconds. And you say, I'm going to come back next week, uh, but what I'd like to know, if you'll let her know, is what can I do to change your life? That's what I want to come talk to you next week, and I only need five minutes next week. So I'll see you next week. Right? Now they might be like, whoa, 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 get back here. Now you know what they're probably going to think? Like, what? Who is this? Guess what? When you show up, I want you to research that CPA if you possibly can. What do you see in the background in their picture? Are they a Colts fan or they whatever? They say, hey, how are you doing? You look lovely today, you know. I love your brooch, you know. Chat up, this and that. Well, how'd that go last week? Did that go over well, right? You're now making friends with this person because this person's going to be like, give them a chance. Will you give them five minutes, right? Now, this person's trained to not like you as well, so make yourself irresistible to them. How do you do that? Hey, here's a payday candy bar for you, right? Here's a whatever. Don't, don't give what is to them, them to pass off, right? Because they're just going to walk in and be like, hey, uh, somebody dropped this off for you, right? But if you go, hey, I brought this for you. You know why? Because no one ever brings anything to this person, right? Now, if you have uh, really some gumption and you know they're doing payroll for their clients and you said, hey, can I talk to your payroll manager? And you say to the payroll manager, what can I do to change your life? I'm with ADP, right? You probably don't even want to hear what I have to say, but what could I do to change your life? I heard some things from ThinkWork that would probably change their life on efficiencies that ADP could do and the back office that wouldn't even cost them their job. Go into the lion's den. So if you were doing business with a snake, right? Because you're not the snake in this scenario. The CPA is the snake, right? Do you just get to walk up and pet a snake, right? At any minute, it's going to bite you. Now, do you think if you hung out with a snake for a little while, a couple weeks, a year, that eventually you could just go up and pet that snake? Probably not, right? Snake's going to always be ready to bite you no matter what. Here's what's, here's what's very interesting, even I'm going to talk from personal experience. So let's say that um, I visit with you and I got your grandmother's name. I told you that we're doing a, a special and selling a packet of pens. And you go ahead and introduce me. We meet all the different times. You're now having uh, breakfast with your grandmother Sunday morning. And she goes, oh, yeah, by the way, JJ came by Wednesday. Well, what was JJ doing? Oh, he was selling me some pearl necklace. Like, what? Why is he selling you a pearl necklace? Right? That's not anything to do with pens. And then you call and you're like, JJ, why were you talking to my grandmother, number one? You didn't tell me you were calling my grandmother. Why did you call my grandmother? Well, I thought everything was cool. I thought, like, I had this relationship with your grandmother. Well, why in the heck are you selling pearl necklaces, right? See, many times with you being at ADP, if you're now doing work comp or benefits or PEO or payroll, I mean, uh, uh, HR, right? The CPA doesn't, in their brain, think that actually has anything to do with payroll. So you just came and sold pearl necklaces to somebody that they got comfortable with you, and now you're going to get bit, and they're not going to trust you. So while you're building that trust, you want to keep it simple. You're not there, okay, to roll out minute one all the things that ADP can do. Keep it simple. Stupid is what's ADP do that the world thinks ADP only does payroll. I know it's only 20% of what you do, which is phenomenal. But to a CPA, they're now first going to be concerned about you talking to their client about payroll. So don't complicate it by also asking if you can talk to their client about their retirement plan. Because that CPA is going to go, no, 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 no. They work with Lance or Jason. I don't want you talking to them about their retirement. Oh, what do you mean work comp? No, they, they work with Jim. I've had them with Jim for a long time and work comp, right? Oh, well, we'll talk to them about PEO. No, PEO is a scam. 
Why are you doing this? How do you make them a client most easily or their business uh, client, right? With the payroll. Now, if they say, well, all of our clients uh, are with ADP. Sweet. Did you know that we do 401k? Do you know that we do PEO? Do you know anything about that? So go in and do one thing. That should make it very simple for you to go and talk to CPAs. Uh, I was talking with my good friend that's already left me because he said he had to go to um, a uh, uh, some kind of mixer. But I was telling him yesterday, he, I said, have you been out to talk to CPAs? He said, no. I said, well, how long have you been here? And he said, four months. And I said, well, why aren't you talking to CPAs? He's like, well, I still got to get to know my stuff. Right? So many of you may think that. Here's the deal, you're never gonna know as much as me. I don't care if you studied it, you're a master of it, and you're coming in with 25 years of experience, you're never gonna know more than me. Because I know my client and you don't. That's what's always gonna give me the advantage. This isn't a test on when's the due date of 941. So I told him, I said, well, what is your concern? He said, well, if I go in and talk with the CPA and they start asking me some questions about payroll, I wanna be able to answer them. I said, well, here's how you combat that. So, by the way, I also have my life insurance uh, license. And I was number eight in the country at Mass Mutual the first year that I started at Mass Mutual. So, I'm selling life insurance. And you know what? Someday you're going to die. Let's talk about that. All right? And I sold it. Right? Made 250 grand. It's a lot of money. First year. Because I knew how to ask questions. Right? But... When we're now talking about just getting in with the CPA and they say, well, you know, I, I know they've got some new legislation. You know, the SECURE Act came out, uh, Haley. Uh, what about this? What about that? I told him, and what I would say if I didn't know the answer, and even if I did, I'd say, well, I got a question for you. Return the question with the question. I got a question for you. Is this really what you want to keep up with? What if I had a team that could come in and would already know that and help you with your client? Would that be good for you? Uh, probably. How can I problem solve? Why is it that you want to know that answer? Because see, to get the right answer to anything, to get the best answer, you actually have to ask the right question. You don't just need to have the answer, you have to find the right question. How do you find the right question? Asking more questions. So it doesn't even matter, right? I don't know, somebody pick a product that I probably wouldn't know anything about. Well, I know about retirement. Pick, uh, no. How about uh, toilet paper, all right? So if I'm gonna go in and talk about somebody with toilet paper, what would be the best way to find try and figure out what their views are on toilet paper and what brand they use and do they think that's something that's funny or embarrassing or do they have pride in it? How would I do that? Hey, I got a question for you. What kind of toilet paper do you use? Just basic ordinary. Just basic ordinary? Yeah. I got a question too. So why the basic ordinary? Cost effective. Cost effective. Okay. What did I just learn from him? Right? right. Boom. I just asked two questions. Now am I going to know how to better approach what he's doing? If I were to ask more questions, right? Where do you usually shop to get your toilet paper? Walmart. Walmart, okay. What would I just learn, right? So asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. And so in your first meeting or in additional meetings, just ask a lot of questions and then you say, okay, so if I come back next week and I can tell you about the SECURE Act and maybe I bring an expert, uh, would you then give me a couple of minutes to visit with you about a few things related to ADP? Yeah, okay, what would you like to... What would you like me to tell you about ADP? Well, I don't even know what you guys do. Okay. What would you like to know specifically? You know we do payroll, right? Yeah. Would you want to hear about benefits? No. <clears throat> so you're asking, can I come back next week, right, and get a commitment? If I come back and I just get five minutes, what do you want me to talk to you about? Here's the other thing. When you visit with me, I'm not making money. I charge $400 an hour to my client. I don't charge by the hour, but that's what I base my fees off. So if I'm visiting with you for 200 minutes, I lost $100. And CPAs think that way. By the way, what I tell you the most valuable commodity is to me, time. So what you're trying to do is not really solve a problem for the CPA 
on payroll. You're not even trying to solve a problem of taking a service off of their desk. What you're trying to solve a problem with them is finding more time for them. So by asking questions, what kind of toilet paper do you use? Where do you buy it, right? You're getting a feel for these things. The other aspect is, what I told you next is, we are looking at a shortage of employees. By the way, uh, we are even having trouble just bringing in uh, people to help us during tax season just at the front, like with the receptionist. So I know I'm not alone in that regard, which means this, depending on your discussions with the CPA, but you say, you know, do you feel that your firm is at any risk in the next five years just based on um, number of employees that are available or staff? You know, I'm not, and you say, I'm not talking about your staff leaving, but just as you grow, do you have any concerns over that? Probably going to say yes. Say, well, what could I do to help you with that? And you're like, I don't know. Well, what if I helped you find more time or less time that your firm needs to spend on something? And it's going to be payroll. So this is the one thing that I'm on a mission. Kelly and I started kind of spitballing this last night. Uh, but I'm like, maybe we're going to do a road show. And it's going to be talking to CPAs. And the whole road show is going to be, why do CPAs think they need to do payroll? It's bean counting. That's what my, my grandfather told me. It's plain and simple bean counting. It's just keeping up with due dates. I can't go on vacation. So the first five years, I need to put food on the table. I started with zero clients. So what did I do? Payroll, right? And it sucked. And it took a lot of time, and clients don't want to pay for it. When I hit the five-year mark, all the clients that I was doing payroll for, I finally did what my grandfather said, and I sold that book to another company, uh, a, a payroll company. And it was the best decision I ever made, and it freed up more time. Now my clients are working with an expert, right? So what you're selling also with ADP is expertise. You're saving them time, and you're selling expertise. But here's the other thing that's a big concern for the CPA community is security breaches. So we're a big target because if you can break into a uh, accounting firm's you know, server, we got bank account information, social security numbers, dates of birth, all kinds of information. And now, if we're doing payroll, we have all that information on our client's employee. So in this book, I talk about just the small practice that I had. I was up to 13 uh, staff and uh, went a different direction, and now I'm just down to me, Coop, and uh, Alona, and somebody that helps us during tax season, making uh, uh, actually more money net and enjoying life more, doing seminars and this. But <clears throat> when you're now talking to them, say, do you have any concerns about uh, security breaches? Anything I could do to help with that? Get to know some security experts, maybe. Read up on what our concerns are and what we're having to do. Because this is a big part of the continuing ed that we're going to. It's being fed to us. And us as CPAs, we're behind the times, including me. We're resistant to technology. But now it's catching up with us. So the other thing that ADP brings is security. So time and expertise, that's what uh, a CPA is going to expect of whoever doing the business with, and security. Does this have anything to do with timely doing payroll? Does it have anything to do with pricing? Because I'm not going to care what you're going to charge my client if you just save me now five hours a week that I can now bill at $400 an hour. Kelly was telling me about an analysis that she does on the regular, um, and probably Lori, uh, you all came up with it together, so I'm making sure, but you were the one telling me about it. But the other thing is, it takes, according to Kelly, which I'm going to now always quote her on, but the average client in a CPA firm that needs payroll is three hours a month of that CPA's time. So another thing you'd say, it's like, hey, just curious, you know, if I ever send anybody here, what's your, what's your hourly rate? Oh, well, it depends, blah, blah, blah. Well, what's your highest hourly rate? And I'd tell you it's 400 an hour. So now you already know in your head that if you were to save them three hours a month with just one client, they could fill that in and make $1,200. I'm not charging $1,200 most likely to do payroll. Now, if I was doing payroll, it'd be $5,000 a month. 
if I had a client that's like, I need payroll, I only want you to do it. I'd be like, great, it's five grand a month, 60 grand a year, because I'm gonna have to hire a full-time person to do this because I don't want to do it, right? I'm having fun with you, but my point is, is that you're now making me more money. Time, expertise, security, how do you make me more money? Because here's the deal, when you now want to take over payroll, you've just taken a revenue stream. I think Lori was telling me yesterday that the profitability usually is zero, maybe 5% for a CPA firm. And amazingly, Lori and Kelly have visited with CPAs and they're doing the analysis with them. So maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but my understanding is you all do a free valuation, uh, uh, if you will, of a CPA's practice. So it'd be something else to say, hey, have you ever had your, your payroll practice uh, evaluated, a valuation put on it, you know? Hey, would that, be would that be something you'd be interested in if we could get that done? Why would I do that? Well, from the standpoint of maybe an analyzing how much uh, payroll really is being profitable for your business. Because if I could make you more profitable, would that be something you'd be interested in? Of course, they're going to say yes. So with all of that, you probably are going to also come across CPAs that are like me, that I send all of my clients to somebody else. So the first advice that Cooper and I give to clients I'll say this in closing, that is that if you're gonna do business with us, you will not do your own payroll, you will not do it on QuickBooks, you will not use whatever company you've been using, and we're not doing it, you will use ADP. And what I tell the client is, if they're resistant to that, well, what's it gonna cost? It's like, no, no, no. The first advice, the first recommendation I'm telling you is that I need, to use, I need you to use ADP. Now, I'm gonna tell you why, but here's what I want you to know. If you don't follow this advice, I know that you're not following my advice, which means you're not a client. So here's the other thing. In the CPA world, the client is never right. We're not selling suits here. The, the client we see as an infant, we see as a, as a grandmother that we're there to protect. They're skeptical of you. So why try and compete to try and talk to the grandmother if you're trying to do business with the CPA? How do you make the CPA's life better if you're trying to do business with a CPA? The other thing I'm going to tell you is overlooked is EAs, enrolled agents. They don't get the respect. If you're not talking with EAs, get in to talk with EAs. A lot of EAs are probably doing their own payroll because enrolled agents in general are usually kind of jack of all trades. So enrolled agents, and you can find them on the IRS website, I believe. So I know we're out of time, and uh, I've got a book here for everybody. A um, couple of things on that. Uh, if you all could, even just for three seconds, everybody's going to stand around. I'm going to sign a book, so then I can put on social media. I had a book signing, right? <laughs> right? You guys are going to make that happen for me. But let me tell you this, too, just on a personal note. Dream big, okay? Whether you do this personally or with ADP. Dream bigger than you've ever dreamed. So a lot of you look younger than me. And here's the thing. All the dreams that I set for myself coming out of college, I achieved them all at 35. And then I was kind of like, man, what do I do now? So I came up with bigger dreams. I accomplished all those. And then I came up with bigger dreams. Dream huge. So here's what my dream is. Okay? TJ made it come true, one of them. So two years ago, I started at the beginning of my seminars to travel around the country, I'm in front of 800 CPAs, trying to have fun, lighten up the mood, start out the seminar. And I say, could you imagine if CPAs were sponsored like a golf pro or like an NBA player? And I pulled up pictures, and it was me and Shaq selling a Canon printer, right? I was like, wouldn't that be so cool? Like maybe have a headband that says Casio, you know, for the calculator. And I throw up there, could you imagine if we were sponsored by ADP? Right? Three days before TJ calls me, I'm watching a PGA Tour uh, event, and I'm like, man, I mean, could you imagine if I was sponsored by ADP? So this has been a dream of mine. It's like, how would that ever happen? I'm a small CPA out of Oklahoma. How would that ever happen? How would it ever happen? I have 92,000 subscribers on YouTube. Right? It was dreaming it. It was putting it out there. So do you want to make a million dollars? Short answer should be yes. Do you want to make 100 grand next year? 
You want to make 150 grand next year? How do you do it? That CPA is your ticket. When I talk about in this book, every practice, if you landed and tapped one CPA firm, my CPA firm, we have 307 businesses that we work with. How many employees is that? 1,689, because I counted it all up when I did the book. That's actually who your end result customer is, right? On the payroll side or in the PEO, right? It's that end goal. But your gatekeeper, the snake, the godfather, godmother, the one that doesn't trust you, the one with professional skepticism, is that gatekeeper, right? So dream big that you want to do business with 10 CPAs, 100 CPAs. So by putting it out there, I now am partnered with, sponsored, if you will, with ADP, which is the biggest honor of my life. So I'm honored to be associated with you all. Uh, and the only other dream that I have, and I got to come up with some other ones, is that I got two. One is I want to fill a stadium, literally. Like, where do the Colts play? Okay, I want to fill that stadium for people to come and see JJ the CPA. Probably never going to happen. But you know why it could happen? Because I just said that I want to do that. So start saying out loud to you what your, yourself what you want to do. Write down the goals. Write down what you're going to talk to the CPA about. Here's the other one. I want to star in a Super Bowl, Super Bowl commercial with all of you at halftime supporting or promoting ADP. So let's make that happen, huh? Let's go. Huh? We want to be number one. We want ADP to go, oh my gosh, JJ the CPA led the Indiana, the Indiana office, which that's just me being big ego, to being the number one in the world. We've got to do what? Oh, we heard JJ wants to be in a commercial in the Super Bowl, and he wants the whole team here to be with him. That's what we're doing. So five years from now, that's our goal. 2029, Super Bowl, whatever, that's our goal. Will it happen? Well, it could because I just put it out there. So how does that happen? How do you make my dream come true? That you all start doing business with CPAs more and more and more. I know with Lori and her background, 12 years, has done a phenomenal job. I think you said in the nation you all have more relationships with CPAs than anywhere else. But I think you said, what is it though? Only 18% of CPA firms? So go and get it because you've got 72 more percent that uh, you can go and get. All right. I think I'm out of time, but I'm happy to answer questions. I'd love to give everybody a book, uh, sign it. If you don't care about my signature, I'll just hand it to you. But uh, with that, thank you for your time. It's an honor to be associated. Look forward to being back here another time. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. The book signing, all for social media. All right, Mason, get up here. I'll sign the book for you first.